the Holy Ghost in my house. My soul is caught on fire, and it's burning, burning here in my house. The Holy Ghost in my house, it burns like liquid fire. The Holy Ghost in my house, I feel like Jeremiah. The Holy Ghost in my house, my soul is caught on fire, and it's burning, burning here in my house. Jesus was a living earth, and he told his disciples to wait for the power of the Pentecostal fire. 120 were there, praying in the upper room. There was a sound from heaven, and the Holy Ghost filled the room. Continuing steadfastly in the Apostles Doctrine. Join us right here on HGG Radio Mondays to Fridays from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. MST and 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. EST for a new and exciting Bible discussion program, The Apostles Doctrine. Come and hear the word being rightly divided by dynamic preachers and teachers. It's The Apostles Doctrine, hosted by Minister Tyrone Reed, weekdays from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. MST. Come for the fellowship, stay for cerebral conversations and all things scriptural. for the program Expectation Mondays to Fridays at 6.45 a.m. Mountain Standard Time right here on HGG Radio. The word of the Lord says this, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That's the program Expectation Mondays to Fridays at 6.45 a.m. Mountain Standard Time brought to you by the Christ Alive Christian Center 4217 to 19 Vario Avenue, Bronx, New York, USA. A revolution is coming to the Hope of Glory Morning Show. Get ready for the pulsating, electrifying, inspiring, and motivating two hours of music, word, health, and wealth. Mondays to Fridays from 6 to 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Right here on HGG Radio. Join me, your host, Rashane Douglas, the Christ in me, the hope of glory. That's the new time for the Hope of Glory Morning Show, Mondays to Fridays from 6 to 8 a.m. Right here on HGG Radio. Visit our website, hggradio.ca, or download the HGG Radio mobile app. See you soon. Do you want a revolution? I say, do you want a revolution? Top African Fashion, the one-stop shop for all your African needs for men, women, and children. Top, Top African, African Fashion. Fashion, we sell anchor and lace fabrics, wigs, jewelry, African traditional beads, matching shoes and bags for ladies. We also carry shoes for men and kids, belts, and so much more. Top, Top African, African Fashion. Fashion, for all season, occasion, and celebration, church, wedding, and graduation. Top, Top African, African Fashion. Fashion, open every day. Visit us today at 9338 118 Avenue, Edmonton, or call 780 22 Four seven three three nine. Top African, African fashion. fashion. HGG Radio. Calling all believers. Are you continuing steadfastly in the Apostles' Doctrine? Join us right here on HGG Radio, Mondays to Fridays from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. MST and 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. EST for a new and exciting Bible discussion program, The Apostles' Doctrine. Come and hear the word being rightly divided by dynamic preachers and teachers. It's The Apostles' Doctrine, hosted by Minister Tyrone Reed, weekdays from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. MST. Come to the fellowship, stay for cerebral conversations and all things scriptural. The top of the afternoon to you. Welcome, welcome to yet another episode of the Apostles' Doctrine. 
uh, right here on HGG Radio. I'm your host, Tyron Reed. And of course, with me in studio uh, is uh, the ever present uh, with us. Yes, thank you so much for the support, Pastor Clive Atkinson. Uh, he's the pastor of Higher Ground Tabernacle uh, uh, Ministry. Uh, we are also being joined today uh, by Pastor Garfield King, who is joining us all the way uh, over there in uh, New York. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today, uh, Pastor uh, King. We're hoping also to be joined by uh, Elder Richard Campbell. Yes, uh, he should also be joining us today. Today, it's the TGIF edition of 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 the <laughs> apostles doctrine and we are talking the sabbath yeah if you observe the sabbath we're not too far away from it yeah uh I, I, we're talking the sabbath today and and the central question we want to focus on in today's program is is the church commanded to keep the sabbath yes is the church commanded to keep the sabbath uh, we, we know that the Bible says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. That is in Exodus 20 verse 8, because we like to talk Bible here. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. That's in the, in the Old Testament. So is the church required? Greetings, Richard Lawrence, my brother. Good to see you on. Is the church required to keep the Sabbath? And we're going to hear from Pastor King. And we're going to hear from Pastor Clive. What do the apostles say about that? What does the Bible say? We see uh, Elder Richard uh, Campbell is, is our, our joining us. Welcome to the program once again, Elder Campbell. Cheers to the weekend to everyone who is listening to us. Good one to take you into the weekend God today. We're talking. Oh, the Sabbath. God bless you, Elder. The Bible is clear, gentlemen. It says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Are Christians sinning if they're not keeping the Sabbath? I want to hear from you, gentlemen. But before we do, let's turn to this video that we have because we, we have a video of someone who believes in uh, holding the Sabbath, observing the Sabbath. And we want to share that video with you today so the points can be made. Because before we close today, you know, uh, we need you to understand whether or not you need to start observing the Sabbath. Uh, whether by the sunset, you know, if you need to ensure that you're keeping the Sabbath day holy. What does it mean to keep the Sabbath day holy? These are questions that we are answering. And right here on this program uh, we'll tell you very often, Acts 2 verse 42, it says of the early church that they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and breaking of bread and fellowship. You know, it can't be that we're making it up as we go along. Are we doing what the Bible teaches? That is what this program is about. And of course, it's also about speaking the truth in love. We don't believe in bashing anybody over the head. Come, let us reason, the book says. We have conversations over here on the Apostles' Doctrine. We want to do, get to Bible, though. We want to get to what the Scripture says. And so here is Doug Batchelor in this YouTube video uh, making the case for why the church ought to keep the Sabbath. And when we come back, we'll get introductory remarks from our panelists, and then we dive into the various Scriptures. Let's hear what Doug Batchelor has to say. I agree that when you're talking about the word forever, uh, various times in the Bible, it's sometimes uh, nebulous. I also agree we're not under the old covenant now. I believe that we're under the new covenant. And if you look there in Hebrews, you can look in Jeremiah chapter 31, 31. You can also look in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 8, where he says he's making a new covenant. What is the issue with the new covenant? Well, the covenant is made on better promises, and it's written on a different... Uh, substance. Old covenant is written on stone. New covenant is written on the heart. They're both the law of God. Um, the promises, the fault with the old covenant, God said finding fault with them in Hebrews chapter 8. The them is Israel. You remember when God gave the Ten Commandments and he proclaimed them from the mountaintop, 
that um, the people said, all the Lord has said we will do. And then shortly after that, they made a golden calf. They broke the covenant. They broke the promise. God says this new covenant is going to be based upon better promises. What are the better promises? It's a promise of God. God said, I will write my law in their heart. And so the covenant is based upon what God is promising. Now, I believe that the, uh, the Sabbath is a whole different nature, the seventh-day Sabbath, than you would find in the ceremonial Sabbath. And I agree that there's a lot of laws in the... Uh, um, it looks like you're getting it working here. There's a lot of ceremonial laws that uh, do not apply. We're talking about the Ten Commandments. The Sabbath was instituted before there was sin. And uh, I believe that the Sabbath was established at creation. And uh, the reason for that is, let's just look at it here, Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and he sanctified it because in it he had rested from all the work that God created and did. So three times it says the seventh day, the seventh day, the seventh day. And I know we're not actually arguing about the Sabbath day, which day is the Sabbath here. I think Steve would freely admit that if you're going to keep a day, it's the seventh day. He's contesting that there really is no Sabbath right now. Um, but look at what happened. God makes the whole world in six days. How many days in a week? Seven. Why? Because God now makes one more day, and he does it after he makes man, and he blesses the day, he hallows the day, he sanctifies this day. The idea that man was not aware of it. Now man is made in God's image, and this is a day that God has declared holy. It's not like man is going to go up and say, God, on the seventh day, I want to talk to you. God said, don't bother me, I'm resting. Um, the Sabbath day was made for this world. Adam was given dominion of the world, and it's something that man was supposed to participate in from the very beginning. And when you think about the creation, who is the creator? The Bible says all things that were made were made by him. Who's that? That's Jesus. Isn't that right? He is the living word. He made all things. He's the one who wrote the Ten Commandments. All things that were made were made by him. So we don't have Jesus at odds with the Ten Commandments. And if you look here in Exodus 20, verse 8, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you should labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. You'll notice the word Sabbath is three times in this commandment. Now, by the way, the longest of the Ten Commandments, it's in the middle of the Ten Commandments. It is the only commandment that begins with the word remember, and many are saying it's the only one we're supposed to forget. Because nobody here really believes, if you look at the commandments before the Sabbath and after the Sabbath, do born-again New Testament, New Covenant Christians honor their mother and father? Are we supposed to not kill and not lie and not steal and not take God's name in vain? Pick your other nine commandments. Nobody has a problem with those being part of the ongoing Christian life. Why would we take the one in the middle that God says, no, don't forget this, and say that's the only one you're really supposed to forget? And by the way, it ties the commandments between God to the commandments with man. It not only says that you're supposed to rest on the seventh day, it says you're supposed to work, and it's supposed to let your, your uh, slave and your animals, your son and your daughter, and even the stranger within your gates, foreigners, are to observe it. Anyone within your territory. Uh, get back to the commandment here. And it says, you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male servant or your female servant or your cattle or the stranger within your gates. And then he tells why. He points back to the creation when God established the Sabbath day. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. And he rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and he hallowed it. The Bible says in Chronicles 17.27, for you have blessed, O Lord, and it will be blessed forever. And Jesus said, it's easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one tittle of the law to fail. Most people have no clue that in 2023, the best way to make money on Amazon is not with physical products. It's Amazon's other company, Autumn. So is the Sabbath rest only for Israelites? I say no. Uh, is it only Israelites that need a day of rest? Is it only Jewish slaves that need to rest? I mean, do we as Christians believe a person should work seven days a week, 365 days a year? Sabbath is very practical. It's a moral law as well as a spiritual law. 
Jesus said, Mark 2, 27, he said the Sabbath was made for man. The word there, man, is anthropos, and that means humanity. You know what else was made for man in the Garden of Eden? The woman. Do we still need women? <laughs> then we still need the sacred day of rest. And so um, I believe that the Sabbath is it's an eternal institution. God makes this before there's sin. The ceremonial Sabbaths, and there are many of them, they all come as a result of sin. Part of God's perfect plan, the very beginning of his perfect institution, included the Sabbath day. And the reason he says man was not made for the Sabbath is because God first makes man, then he makes the Sabbath to be a blessing for man. He doesn't make the Sabbath and then tell man you're to serve it. And he goes on, he says in Isaiah 56, verse 6 and 7, also the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord to serve him, to love the Lord, to be his servants, everyone that keeps the Sabbath from polluting it and takes hold of my covenant. He's talking about non-Jews here. It says, even them I'll bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. For my house of prayer shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. Uh, it, and now you say, well, but it, it was for the Jews. Because we have these verses like Exodus 31, Steve just quoted. It says, it's a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth. Well, did he only make the heaven and the earth for Jews? Or is that something that points back for all humanity? Something else you should notice there. If you look in the Ten Commandments, when God first gives the Ten Commandments, he says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. And what's he referencing? The Exodus for the children of Israel. He says, you're to have no other gods before me. Now, are we going to say that because God connects the first commandment with Israel, that that commandment doesn't apply because it's a Jewish commandment? I think everyone agrees, no. That first commandment is for all New Testament, New Covenant Christians. Do only Jews need to work six days? Do only Jews and Jewish slaves and Jewish animals need to rest? See, that's part of the commandment. We always talk about the resting part but uh, and the, keeping it holy and not working, but it was a day to also make sure they remembered to let their servants rest. That's why when Moses repeats the Sabbath commandment in Deuteronomy chapter 5, he says, don't forget you are slaves. He's saying, make sure and let your servants and let your animals rest. Don't forget you are a slave. So it's not just about keeping the day holy. It's about resting, too. Um, now, just I just threw this in for context. Uh, if you look at Martin Luther, John Wesley, John Whitecliffe, William Tyndale, Charles Spurgeon, John Calvey, Dwight Moody, Billy Graham, all believe what I'm telling you, that the Sabbath was established in the Garden of Eden, and it is still part of the Ten Commandments, the new covenant is that law written on the heart. So this is not, you know, this is a pretty orthodox point of view. Jesus and the apostles kept the Sabbath. And Gentile Christians did. Let's look at this real quick. He came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read. It doesn't say he's keeping the Jewish Sabbath. It's his custom to obey the commandments of God. You can also read about Paul. And Paul, as his custom was, he went unto them three Sabbath days and reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Um, and it says he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath day and persuaded Jews and Greeks. So now it's not just Jews. He's not just going to the synagogue to talk to Jews, Jews and Greeks. If you look in Acts 13, and when the Jews are gone out, okay, the Jews are gone now. It says they went out of the synagogue. The Gentiles besought these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now we got Gentiles coming and listen. It says on the next Sabbath, almost the whole city came together to hear the word of God. And the whole city, the Gentiles came together. The apostles met, and someone counted it up once, and there were you know, like 50 Sabbaths in the Acts of the Apostles when you add up the years that the apostles were meeting, and never did they say it was done away with. Acts 16, 13, Luke, who's a Gentile, writing to Theophilus, who's a Gentile, and he says... Uh, on the Sabbath day, we went out of the city to a riverside where prayer was customarily made. Just states it as a matter of fact. Luke mentions the Sabbath many times in his gospel. He never says the Jewish Sabbath. In fact, the Sabbath is mentioned 172 times in the Bible. It would have been so easy for God to say, you don't need to keep the Sabbath anymore. Look at what God does when he gives the Sabbath. On a mountain, burning with fire, don't touch it, voice of God writes it with his own hand, writes it in stone to represent its unchanging nature. All the other Ten Commandments we probably all agree on. 
But it's this one that's become a point of contention. I think that it's still in effect. Did Jesus intend his people to keep the Sabbath after the cross? Matthew 24, he's talking about the end of time. He says, he that endures to the end. The disciples say, what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the world? And in that discourse, he says, pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Just states it as a fact. So have the Ten Commandments been changed or abrogated? Obviously, I think not. I think the New Covenant is God writing that law in love on our hearts. Ten Commandments are summarized in love. First four commandments deal with love and worship for God. Last six commandments deal with love for your fellow man. You've got this love relationship and this love relationship. And that's the new covenant. It's through love we do it. And so when I'm talking about the Sabbath, nobody's saved by keeping the Sabbath. Nobody's saved by any law. The question is, if you love him, do you want to keep those laws? Why wouldn't you? It wasn't created to be a burden for man. It was created to be a blessing. So have the Ten Commandments been changed? Bachelor there, making the case, yes, in that video that we just shared with you, that the church ought to keep the Sabbath day holy. Yes, so, so, so is that what is required? He makes some points in that video. Uh, uh, he says the, the, the Sabbath written on the Ten Commandments, written on stone, and that which is written uh, on under our hearts, which is the New Covenant are both the laws of God. He says, uh, better promise means it's, it's a promise of God. Uh, Sabbath, he says, was established at creation, and he quoted Genesis 2, uh, uh, verse 1 to 3. Uh, and he questions uh, Pastor King and Pastor Clive and Elder Campbell. Why break only one of the Ten Commandments? Yes, uh, he says it's an eternal institution made before man sinned. And that he and, and here's a big point he makes. He says that the Lord Jesus and the apostles kept the Sabbath. How do you respond to these things? Is, is this a correct reading of scripture? He goes on to say the New Testament never says the Sabbath was done away with. Uh, no explicit instruction uh, from God not to keep the Sabbath. What 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 really Ought to be. Should the church keep the Sabbath? I see uh, Indiana Stewart is joining us. Blessings and greetings. God bless you, Indiana Stewart. Uh, I see Andrea Jones, sorry, also uh, is with us. Uh, pardon me. Bless the Lord, everyone. We are together again, agreeing with the apostles' doctrine. That's what we're trying to get at. We're trying to get at what do the apostles teach? Let me give you the first job at this pastor king uh, uh, coming to us uh, from, from New York. And of course, Ella Campbell with us uh, from Jamaica. Uh, and Pastor Clive with us in studio. How do you respond to, to, to these things, uh, Pastor King? The, 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 the apostles and the Lord Jesus kept the Sabbath. Oh, come on, talk to us. What, what does the Bible say about keeping the Sabbath? Amen. Bless the Lord. Uh, I agree to you, Minister Reed, Pastor Atkinson. Amen. Uh, Ella Campbell. All, the, all, all your faithful viewers. <laughs> And I greet you all in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Uh, the, the, the speaker made some fundamental errors. And um, it, it is really about rightly dividing the word. So on the, on the firstly, on the, in, in creation, God uh, sanctified the seventh day. And that's the Sabbath, the, the, the seventh day. And um, as... In scripture, we'll see that from Genesis right to, to Revelation, there's a, you know, there's a progressive re revelation of the will and the plan of God. And so even though God sanctified the Sabbath on this day, there's absolutely no where in scripture and um, neither historically and, and, and the speaker, um, you know, if he could, he would have established that. But there's absolutely no where in scripture where human beings were commanded to keep the Sabbath before um, God commanding the Jews or the Israelites to keep the Sabbath. Amen. And when God commanded the Israelites to keep the Sabbath, he said it was a perpetual covenant between himself and them. And, and the truth is, um, the, the, the Sabbath, it would be 
possible in some parts of the world to keep it as well. So it, has to, it had to do with the people, the Jews. It had to do with where they were located. So just to give you the, the essence and the context is that when God um, you know, established a covenant, which was the law that he established with the Jews, um, there were 613 commandments, of course, and, and we have 10, which is a Decalogue. And um, men have tried to, you know, we have, we have um, you know, classified the laws as moral, ceremonial, etc. And um, the, the truth is that the Sabbath is as a moral, um, you know, it, it, it represents something moral in terms of rest, the principle of rest. And that's what God was talking about, you know, when he sanctified the Sabbath. There's this principle of rest. And, and God was pointing to something that would come later on. But so the principle of rest is, is, is one thing that God provided. But, but the Sabbath also has some ceremonial applications. And um, what we're saying is that the ceremonial applications are, are done away with. So the progressive revelation in, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, God used types and shadows um, to establish um, some spiritual truths. And in the New Testament, we have come into... The, those spiritual truths. The, the culmination was in Jesus Christ, and it all typified um, greater truths that were to come. And, and the truth is that when Christ fulfilled the law, fulfilled, you know, uh, as the perfect man, the perfect sacrifice, when he fulfilled the law, all those things that were shadows and types, all those things that were figurative, that were pointing to a greater truth, Christ, when we have the truth, we no longer deal with the figure. And so, therefore, you know, we can give the one analogy that is used. If there's a building and the building casts a shadow, you can stand in the shadow, but you're not in the building. But when you enter the building, there's no need for the shadow. As well, if, if I could be at, at a building and I see the shadow of somebody coming around the corner, and um, but that's not the person. I could detect, okay, this person is coming, and based on the shadow, you know, I might inaccurately or accurately, you yeah, might have a sense of how the person looks. But when the person comes around, and I'm looking at them, you know, I, I have the fullness of, of the revelation of who they are. And so the Sabbath was such, it, it was, you know, rest. And um, the, 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 the truth is that, that Jesus Christ fulfilled the Sabbath and our rest in the New Testament is in Jesus Christ. What the Bible pointed to, the rest that we, 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 we now have is, is in the Holy Ghost. And later on, we'll establish from, from Scripture that the Sabbath has been fulfilled. Um, by the outpouring of the Holy Ghost and the rest that we get in the Holy Ghost, the rest that we get in Jesus Christ and being filled by his spirit. Um, they, 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 in the Old Testament, the, the, the Hebrew word for Sabbath, um, for the Sabbath, was um, the, it really meant to, to rest, to cease from work, to stop working, and that's what God did. Nowhere in the Old Testament were the Hebrews commanded to worship on the Sabbath day. So they were to cease from work which is a principle of rest, right? And, 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 but what we find is that in the intertestamental period, those 400 years between the Old and the New Testament, and when the Jews were exiled in, in Babylon, um, the, you know, the children of Judah and elsewhere, came the, the, then came the, 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 the thing of the synagogues. They start seeing synagogues, and they used to meet, and they developed a custom, a custom of meeting on the Sabbath day. They were not commanded to worship, but they developed this custom. And so the scriptures that he read when Jesus was on earth, you know, he followed the custom and he kept the law. And, and if he was to fulfill the law as the perfect man, no one else could have um, fulfilled the law. They all broke the law. Jesus was the only one in every point of the law, every jot, every tittle. He fulfilled it and he was blameless. And so when we look at, 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 at this, so that it wasn't a time of worship, but nonetheless, that was the custom. If we look in the New Testament, Almost all the moral law have been um, reiterated by Jesus, by the apostles. Never once have they said that men should keep the Sabbath day. So, yeah, you know, and, um, the, the, you know, as we look at the scriptures and that history as well. Um, so they went, remember, this thing started out of, 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 of Judaism. And initially the church were primarily Jews, Jewish converts. And so it was convenient for them that the church met on a Saturday and they met and, and Paul used this as an evangelistic strategy where because they were meeting and his practice was to go to the synagogue where he'd see a lot of Jews because he would um, preach the gospel to them first and it, when they rejected it he went to the Gentiles but mm. in the same scriptures we see that the, the church, the Christians 
started to meet on Sunday because it is established from scripture that the Lord was, was um, resurrected on Sunday. And so they met on Sunday. Amen. And, and some theologians theorize that probably they wanted to so distinguish um, themselves from, from the land, from Judaism. But this practice was continued. And there is a false concept that Constantine changed the Sabbath to Sunday. You know, the, the, the practice, he instituted the practice that the Jews were doing. They were meeting on Sunday. They used to, Sunday was a working day. They used to meet Sunday morning, Sunday night. But I just want to state that the Sunday is not a Sabbath. You know, the, it, it has not replaced. You know, Jesus Christ has fulfilled the Sabbath. He's the fulfillment. So Sunday is not the new Sabbath. People make that mistake as we, well. You know, and the scriptures, when we get to the scriptures, they are very clear that Sabbath is a matter of, you know, if you want to keep the Sabbath day, that's a matter of Christian liberty. But the truth is that the rest that we have in Jesus Christ is a rest from sinful works. And we have constant communion and fellowship with him. I don't want to take up too much of the program. No, man, but, you no, know, no. I just want to say that he's wrong. And um, nowhere are we commanded or required to keep the Sabbath day in the New Testament. We are up on our first break. This is the Apostles' Doctrine, you know. And top drawer theological arguments are being made here. I, I, I was about to tell Pastor King he prob perhaps should take up an offering. He says, when you stand in the shadow of a building, you're not in the building. And once you enter the building, there's no further need for the types and the shadows. I'm interesting. That one didn't get by me, you know, Pastor King. That's a, that's a fabulous uh, theological argument to make. But we heard from Doug Batchelor, though. He says, Jesus and the apostles kept the, the, the Sabbath. He's making... Uh, a, a strident argument himself. But this is the Apostles' Doctrine. I'm <coughs> trying to put this Sabbath <coughs> issue to rest, as one title of a book uh, says. Uh, today, we're talking the Sabbath. Is the church commanded to keep the Sabbath? We'll have more for you on the other side of this break. HGG Radio. Blood on fire, and it's burning. And he told his disciples to wait for the power of the Pentecostal fire. HGG Radio. Are you ready to amplify your message and reach hearts with purpose? Introducing HGG Advertising, your partner in spreading the gospel and connecting with the Christian community. Churches, Christian-based businesses, listen up. With HGG Advertising, you can reach your audience through powerful radio campaigns. Engage hearts, inspire minds, and grow your community with HGG Radio, which is already reaching 136 countries worldwide. We specialize in promoting Christian values and helping businesses aligned with faith-based principles. Whether it's a church event or your business rooted in Christian values, HGG Advertising is here for you. Connect with us and let's share your message with purpose. HGG Advertising, spreading the gospel, connecting communities. Email us today at ads at hggradio.ca that's ads at hggradio.ca or call us today at 825-343-4486 HGG Radio Saffron Caribbean Delight, your one-stop Caribbean cuisine restaurant with their tasty oxtail, curry chicken, jerk chicken, and stew beef. Not to mention their weekend specials, fried fish and soup. Come out and get a taste of the Caribbean located at 8155-112 Avenue or call to order at 780-474-9005. Opening hours from Tuesdays to Thursday from 1 to 7 p.m. and Friday and Saturday 1 to 8 p.m. Saffron Caribbean Delight. Light. It's not about the quantity, but the quality. He went. Calling all believers. Are you continuing steadfastly in the Apostles' Doctrine? Join us right here on HGG Radio, Mondays to Fridays from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. MST and 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. EST for a new and exciting Bible discussion program, The Apostles' Doctrine. Come and hear the word being rightly divided by dynamic preachers and teachers. It's The Apostles' Doctrine, hosted by Minister Tyrone Reed, weekdays from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. MST. Come to the fellow Stay for cerebral conversations and all things scriptural. Welcome back. 
welcome back, welcome back. Everywhere he went, he was doing good, yes? Uh, we're talking the Sabbath today uh, on this T.J. Anthony of the Apostles' Doctrine. Do you need to keep the Sabbath as a Christian, as a believer, as a disciple of Christ, yes? Do you need to keep the Sabbath? That is the central topic of discussion today. Uh, we're seeing some comments coming in our on our YouTube channel, and we'd like to, to take a, a, a few of them. Uh, this is an interesting topic, Judith Lindo says. I'm listening. Uh, Jolene Sterling uh, says, uh, it had nothing to do with the Jews. Adam and Eve kept the Sabbath. The fact that the commandments say to remember the Sabbath day suggests that it existed before the law and the Sabbath has not been done away. Uh, let's let's hear your take on it, uh, uh, Pastor Clive. Let, let's let's have your take on it, and then we'll we'll have Elder Richard Campbell give us your your opening remarks on the Sabbath. You you've heard uh, Doug Bachelor make the case for the keeping of the Sabbath. What say you on this, Pastor Clive? <clears throat> um, sir, the Lord bless you, um, um, Pastor King. Kind of um, put the icing on the cake. With my opening remarks, and I really love the point that he made, is that if you see the shadow of a building and the outside, as long as the, 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 the image is inside mm. the building, the shadow is no more. And um, you know, there's there's more to 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 this uh, teaching that we need to kind of dive into to be able to can share with the listeners to let them know that. And in, as you said in your opening remarks, it's not to bash anybody, but it's for us to go into the scriptures and see uh, what the Lord is saying. Now we know that uh, the Sabbath has been fulfilled, um, uh, has been fulfilled when Jesus Christ came and died. So uh, we, we, we're in the Apostle Doctrine. Let us get into Bible. And this is what the Bible says in um, Exodus. Exodus 31 and verses 13, and I'm just going to read one verse, and then, of course, we can take to, um, come back from that. Um, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Fear my Sabbath, he shall keep, for it is a sign between, between, he's talk, God is talking now to the children of Israel. Israel. Mm -hmm. Between me and you throughout your generation. Mm, throughout your generations. To the people of Israel. To the children of Israel. See where you're going. Now, it not to the not to the, the other nation of people. Even though the other nation benefit from and 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 and, and has um you know, join or come in or make their 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 their, their sacrifices or whatever they do to be a part of the, the the Jewish race. This is the Lord is saying throughout your generation. When Jesus came on the scene, He said, "I did not come to abolish all of this, but I come to fulfill." What is the fulfillment? The fulfillment is that He died. That he died and he rose on the third day, and and that he gave us the Holy Ghost, and now we are resting in him with the promise that he gave to us, which is the Holy Spirit. So the Sabbath was a, a, a type of the true rest that was to come. True rest, the shadow of the true rest to come. The real rest is the man who received the Holy Ghost. Uh, the true rest is when you receive the, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Mm. Well, all right. You you heard there the the opening remarks from from Pastor Clive. We have with us Ella Richard Campbell. We're coming to you. Uh, uh, no, Ella. You know the, the the argument being set forward here is that this Sabbath predates the law, so we can't make the argument that that it has been done away. Uh, with the with 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 the law being being um, no longer required to be observed, uh, your opening remarks, um, Elder Campbell. Should the church keep the Sabbath? 
you so Lord Jesus the church, and greetings. Amen. Yes. We're hearing you now, Ella. Oh, all right. Amen. Amen. I'm glad to be here. I realize that this Sabbath issue for some may never be put to rest because of what many people choose to believe and choose not to believe. For one, the Sabbath was not commanded or instructed to the church. There are three things in scripture when you study the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. When you're studying, one has to pay attention to three things. What is being said? Mm -hmm. To whom it is being said? And the yes. purpose oh. for which it is being said. What is being said? To whom is being said? The purpose for what is being said. So when we, when we look at the apostles' doctrine, we find no place where any of the apostles commanded or were commanded to observe Sabbath days. As a matter of fact, if you look through the entire, all the, the acts of the apostles and the epistles, Observing of a day was by choice, course of choice. Paul in Romans 14 gives us, a, if I could read that, although that's not where I intended to start, but Paul in Romans chapter 14 says it like this. He says, one man esteemeth one day above another. And, and this is because he was talking about those great areas, those issues where people were judging and condemning each other for different reasons. Some because one person can eat good, another person eat herbs. And so there was this back in and forth about who was being righteous or who was right. So he puts it this way. He says, who art thou that judges another man's servants? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holding up, for God is making him stand. One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regarded the day, regarded it unto the Lord. And he that regarded not the day, to the Lord he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth thanks. And he that eateth not, to the Lord he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. So, the teacher that you showed before is a very masterful teacher. Very masterful, and I say very masterful because he uses his words fluently. They flow off his lips, but he uses logic and reason to persuade his audience. He puts forth a scripture and then asks for it to be reasoned out logically. He puts forward an argument, a case, and then he tells us what he thinks. If you notice the amount of times he says what he thinks, his opinion is what drives his arguments and not the understanding of scripture. And so I believe if we stand in the apostles' doctrine, and not try for ourselves to figure out the history of 
um, the law, Sabbath observance in particular, but we allow ourselves to be guided by the apostles' doctrine, then people wouldn't fall into the myriad of errors that they fall into trying to interpret what has already been interpreted by the apostles because God gave it to them by revelation. And so what they have written is for us to be able to understand what comes to us from the Old Testament and, 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 and um, also the life of Jesus Christ. The Sabbath only predates G, um, Moses by virtue of the fact that the scripture says that God rested or ended his work on the seventh day. There was no establishment of a remembrance or a worship on a Sabbath day or seventh day. Adam and Eve did not observe Sabbath. Abraham did not observe Sabbath. Jacob, Isaac, none of them. Noah, none of them. Scriptures have no indication of these things. And as Pastor Clive read from, from um, Exodus 31, I'll read from Deuteronomy. From, from, let's go to Deuteronomy. I'll read from Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 1. Moses says, he, and Moses called all Israel and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and judgments which I speak in your ears this day, that ye may learn them and keep them, keep and do them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb. The Lord made not this covenant with our fathers, but with us, even us, who are all of us here alive this day. Who was speaking? Moses. Who was he speaking to? The children of Israel. For what purpose was he speaking to them? that they would learn, keep, and do the covenant of the Lord. Amen. And so this is what Moses pointed out to the children of Israel. And let me read it again. Deuteronomy 5 verse 3. The Lord made not this covenant with our fathers, that's Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, but with us. And of course, um, not only Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, but also the 12 children, the 12 tribes, the, the 12 sons of Jacob. I, I want you to, Ella, just let me jump in here. A, a, a point that you're making, this passage uh, seems to be critical here. W repeat the, the, where, the location of the passage for us again. Deuteronomy 5, verse 1 to 3. Deuteronomy 5, verse, verses 1 to to three, and, and I want to go there as well, just to bring the, the listeners uh, uh, to it and the viewers. So, yes. Uh, and you, so you're saying Moses is, he calls the children of Israel together and he's addressing them. And he says, uh, the statutes and yes, judgments which I speak in your ears this day, that ye may learn them and keep and do them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb, yes? The Lord made not this covenant mm -hmm. with our others but with us even us who are all of us here alive this day so the patriarchs you are saying didn't keep the, the, the not at all not at all mm. and it's the clear right there who the covenant was made with amen mm. that, that, that's that's my opinion all right. Thank you for that opening. Interesting uh, 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 point there towards the end there, uh, Elder Richard. Uh, Richard, because it's it's. Let me. I'm a matter of fact, I made a note of it, and it's it's Elder Campbell. It's one. It's the one I want to come to first, 
because a, a, a major argument uh, the, for, for, for the Sabbath is that it predates the law. So this argument that the law has been done away with uh, um, isn't, isn't a, a sufficient argument to, to, to suggest that the Sabbath day ought not to be observed uh, uh, by the church because the, the, the Sabbath predates the law. And of course, he mentioned, you heard from Doug Batchelor, he mentioned the, the, that God uh, uh, created, uh, rested on the seventh day, yeah? Uh, and and uh, and also uh, makes reference to uh, the fact that people should remember the Sabbath day. There's an, there's an emphasis. So I want us to tackle those two points right now. I'm coming back to you firstly, Pastor. Well, well, I uh, yeah, I'm uh, coming back to you, uh, Ella, but I'm uh, coming to you first, Pastor King. Two major points, and I need Bible for, for this, Pastor King. One, it's, it says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The suggestion is that there is uh, an emphasis here, and the Lord is reminding them of how important this thing is, and that it was established prior to now, which is why the Lord is saying, remember. The other argument I want you to give me some Bible for, Pastor King, is... Is, is it the Ten Commandments? You shall have no other gods. You shall make no, no idols. You shall not take uh, the name of the Lord in vain. Honor your mother and your father. Thou shall not murder. Thou shall not commit adultery. Thou shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness, which means you shouldn't lie. You shall not covet the Ten Commandments. And, and of course, the one I didn't read, number four, remember the Sabbath day to keep it whole. The, the Doug Batchelor in his argument says, We keep all these other. Um, commandments in the church. Why are we not keeping this one that was to remember? Talk to us, Pastor King. Give us some Bible. Give us some Bible. It predates the law, so the doing away with the law doesn't apply here. Yeah. So <clears throat> the, the 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 thing is that, um, and and I, and I'm and I'm gonna give some Bible, of course, in the New Testament to show it is done away with. But but the truth is that. Simply predating the law doesn't mean that it's still in effect. I mean, circumcision predated the law. Ah, and we're no longer required to do so. Brilliant. Don't you know, the bone for the area. Because I was coming to that. The brilliant. So, uh, so, you know, it can't just simply be predating the law. It is, does this point to a greater truth that has been fulfilled? And mm -hmm. like circumcision, you know, the rest that we now get and is in Jesus Christ. That's where the rest is. Um, the, the, the remember the word remember there really means just to keep in mind, and it could be a reference. It's not that they were, uh, you know, as, and, and the scripture that Elder Campbell brought is so important. So their forefathers never kept it, but you remember just before they received the law in Exodus 16, when God was giving them manna from heaven, He told them to go out on six days and collect, and on the seventh day, take, you know, six the sixth day take twice as much. Don't go out on the seventh day. So this remember could be a reference to that the, what he instituted just a short time before. And you should that, rest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that you should rest on the seventh day. So it is not a, a big argument. So the, 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 the thing is <clears throat> that the, there is absolutely no evidence scripturally or otherwise. And, and let's stick to the scripture to support people keeping the Sabbath or giving, being given a command to keep the Sabbath. But nonetheless, um, there, there are a few key things. If the Sabbath was so important, let's if we go to Acts chapter 15, and this is where you had the first church council. Now, in the first church council, you know, in, in the early church, because many of the converts were Jews and they were so, <clears throat> you know, well trained in the law now, you know, they were strict in, in all aspects of the law. Um, many of them were saying that the Gentiles should keep the law in a sense. And um, <clears throat> the big thing for them, you know, they, they arose some dissension. Just to cut the long story short, when they gathered together and they made the, 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 the point, you know, they say, all right, what are we going to decree for these men to do? What do we want them to keep, you know? And um, these are the things, because when James spoke, um, James said, uh, and I, I'm looking for it now. I'm in I'm, Acts chapter again, 15. Me to says, read I'm going to start, therefore, from verse, yeah. verse 19. It says, therefore, I judge that we are not to trouble those among the Gentiles who are turning to God, but that we write to them to abstain from things polluted by idols, which the law says, from sexual immorality, from things strangled, and from blood. 
And so they sent out a letter to the churches. Read this. Now, if the Sabbath was so important, you know, why did not the apostles in that council say, you know, require the Gentiles to keep the Sabbath? So that was in the first church council. But, you know, there's one scripture that really puts it to rest, you know, apart from Romans 14, which tells us it's a matter of, of um, Christian liberty. Um, Paul writes in Colossians 2, and he says, verse 16 and 17, he says, let no man therefore judge you in meat. And some people know who, who, who you know, are proponents of keeping the Sabbath also said that you shouldn't eat certain meats. But nonetheless, judge you in meat or in drink, or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. And again, the point is these things were to point to a greater truth. You know, the, the entire Bible was given to us, but with the progressive revelation, we must look at the things that have been fulfilled. You know, they used to do animal sacrifice. And by the way, before the law, you know, the patriarchs used to do animal sacrifice. But nonetheless, with animal sacrifice, what was the greater truth? Jesus came and died for our sins. There's no more need for, for animal sacrifice. And, and there are some things. So, you know, if there's no greater truth, then we keep what's in the Old Testament. Because predominantly, we're governed by the new covenant. And the things in the old covenant were to point us to the greater truths in the new covenant. And so... The, the rest that they got, that physical rest, you know, the Bible tells us that we now get this rest in the New Testament, in Jesus Christ. So if Jesus gives us that rest, and it's not just a physical rest, it's more than a physical rest. Why, you know, there is, this has been fulfilled and there is no need to keep, um, to, to worship on a Saturday. And, and, and remember, the important point is they were never commanded to worship on the Sabbath or on a Saturday. They but were to rest. They were to stop from work. You know what I tell people all the while, Minister Reed? Hmm. That more than, because they didn't even light a match, you know? And um, if you look at, at even Orthodox Jews now, you know, they wouldn't even turn on their electric stove. You know, in Israel, them have elevators that on the Sabbath, it stop at every floor, so you'd have to press the button, that sort of thing. So I tell people, literally, and my wife will tell you this, when it comes to a Saturday, I stay in my bed almost all day and don't lift a pin. I was <laughs> more than anybody else I keep the Sabbath. You remember you know? the Sabbath day. <laughs> but the bottom line, it was a day of rest, to cease from work. It was not a day of worship. And the rest that it pointed to, and this is the principle established from the creation, God know that there would be a rest. The rest, the rest for the people of God that Hebrews 4 talk about is a rest from our sinful works. You know? Um, you know, in, in, in Isaiah uh, 28, from 10 to 12, it says... Good, Isaiah, um, yeah. Pastor King, I wanted to bring you back here. Just yeah. remember Isaiah 28. Yeah. We, we, we have here where, where it says, uh, from 19, wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God. Yes, you read that. But yeah. then he goes on to say, but that we write on them that they abstain from pollutions of idols... Yes, and yes. from fornication and from things strangled from and from blood. For yes. Moses of old time, I think every city them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath. Yes. What, what do you make of the reference of the Sabbath in that verse there? He was just referring in that verse, was just simply referring to the custom and the practice what they, they did right there. Because, you know, in the synagogue, their practice, their custom was to come to meet in the synagogue, and that was not commanded by the law. But they met in the synagogue, and what they had, they had at that point in time, they never had the Bible as we have it now. All they had were, was the law. Amen. They had the law and the prophets. That's all they had. And so they read, and they talk about it. So that was the practice. But the Jews were not commanded, the, the, the Gentiles were never commanded, amen, to keep um to worship, to meet on the Sabbath. And then when we get there, I'm going to show you, there are several scriptures to show that the church actually met and gathered on a Sunday. Mm. All right, we're going to take that, mm. but we're going to take it later on. We're up on yeah. the break, but but I think we need to bring this point full circle b b before we, we go to the break. Because that reference there to the Sabbath in, 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 in verse uh, 18 or 19 there, it's important, yeah. I think, 
that are listening and, and our viewers. And remember, you can call us. We sorted out our WhatsApp line, 825-343-7778. You can give us a call and we'll try to take your questions, your comments. 825-343-7778. Call us and we'll try to, to get you onto the program to give your... The, the, the reason for the Jerusalem Council, as it is referred to, Pastor King, yes. is that it begins in verse 1. And I think it's important to set the context. Yes. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. Yes. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenice and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they, and they caused the great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. So yeah, this, is the, this is the issue, that the central issue that was um, in contention. And, and, and the law of Moses, one of them is, remember, the Sabbath to keep it holy. Isn't, mm -hmm. isn't, that, isn't that one of the commandments that was given from Moses to the children of Israel? And they were saying here that they should keep, and the apostles were clear that this is what we are requiring of the Gentiles. It seemed good to us and to the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 15, you uh, have a yeah. read of it. It's a very critical turning point in the church and the doctrines taught by the church. We're on the apostles' doctrine. We're trying to put the Sabbath issue to rest. I will end in, in time so Pastor King can spend the entire Saturday um, in his bed. Yes, he's a yes. man who rests on the yeah, Sabbath. Actually, I want to start from sundown. Unfortunately, I'll have to go soon. <laughs> uh, when we come back, though, Ella Campbell, we're coming to you because I want you to give me some Bible Jesus and the apostles, based on scripture, seemingly kept the Sabbath. I want you to tell me why we shouldn't follow what Jesus did. Why shouldn't we follow Jesus' example more on the other side of the break? Peter and John were there, and they received the fire. The mother of Jesus was there, Mary, and she received the fire. Matthew and James were there. And they receive the fire. And if you have faith right now, you get this fire. Ah, ah, ah. HGG Radio. Join Pastor Dean A. Brown for the program Expectation Mondays to Fridays at 6.45 a.m. Mountain Standard Time right here on HGG Radio. The word of the Lord says this, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That's the program Expectation Mondays to Fridays at 6.45 a.m. Mountain Standard Time brought to you by the Christ Alive Christian Center, 42 17 to 19 Vario Avenue, Bronx, New York, USA. A revolution is coming to the Hope of Glory Morning Show. Get ready for the pulsating, electrifying, inspiring, and motivating two hours of music, word, health, and wealth. Mondays to Fridays from 6 to 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Right here on HGG Radio. Join me, your host, Rashane Douglas, the Christ in me, the hope of glory. That's the new time for the Hope of Glory Morning Show, Mondays to Fridays from 6 to 8 a.m. Right here on HGG Radio. Visit our website, hggradio.ca, or download the HGG Radio mobile app. See you soon. Do you want a revolution? I say, do you want a revolution? 
SGG Radio. Calling all believers. Are you continuing steadfastly in the Apostles' Doctrine? Join us right here on HGG Radio, Mondays to Fridays from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. MST and 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. EST for a new and exciting Bible discussion program, The Apostles' Doctrine. Come and hear the word being rightly divided by dynamic preachers and teachers. It's The Apostles' Doctrine, hosted by Minister Tyrone Reed, weekdays from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. MST. Come to the fellowship, stay for cerebral conversations and all things scriptural. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. You're in tune to the Apostles' Doctrine right here on HGG Radio. And we welcome you if you're listening to us via the HGG Radio app that you can download, by the way, uh, uh, from the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store as well. And you can also go live on our YouTube channel. The conversations happening in the chat are robust. And and, and it's, the, it's the ethos of this show. We're keeping the dialogue respectful, yeah? And we expect that the dialogue in the chat uh, will be respectful as well. And it has been so far. And that is how we want it to be done. Respectful, yeah? We, we, we may not all agree, but we need to keep the dialogue respectful. Elder Campbell, I'm coming to you. The Lord Jesus and the apostles, based on scripture, it appears they kept the Sabbath. What is the explanation for that? Why shouldn't um, the church keep the Sabbath if the Lord Jesus and the apostles kept the Sabbath? Because I know you might have to leave us shortly, Elder. Talk to us, Elder. All right. Before I answer that question, can I can I chime in on a on a prior question? We're not hearing Ella. Um, Ella, I'm not sure if you're muted. All right, go ahead. We hear no, you now. Yes. Um. What? Before I answer that question, I'm gonna ask your permission to chime in on a prior question. Go ahead. Um. Man. That that was asked. Um. Why it is that it was said in the in the um in the Exodus account to remember the Sabbath day. Ah. Uh, yes. Exodus 16, of all the commandments given, the Sabbath observance for the Jews, for the Israelites, was the first of all. What verse? And Exodus 16, mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact, if, if that just, just, just spells it out. But if I was to give you a particular verse, it would be um, about verse... Let, 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 let's go the verse verse 22 yes we're there with you Exodus 16 22 and it came to verse pass 22 down one. or mm -hmm. you can start at 23 the children yeah. of Israel needed food the Lord told Moses that he was going to send them manna and at verse 23 it says this and he said unto them, this is that which the Lord had said. Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which ye will bake today and boil or seed that ye will seed. And that which remain over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. And they laid it up till the morning as the Moses spake and it did not stink. Neither was any worms therein. And Moses said, eat that today. For today is a Sabbath unto the Lord. Today ye shall find not find it in the field. So when you go down a little bit further, because I'm not going to read all of it. Verse 29. See for the Lord hath given you the Sabbath. Therefore, he giveth you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Abide every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the Sabbath day. So Pastor King was talking about the fact that it was not given as a day of worship, congregational worship. They were supposed to abide, stay inside their tents. Not only that, in Exodus 35, it talks about that fire was not to be kindled on that day. Right? And so this is where it was first set up or instituted so when we get to the horrid mount horrid horrid experience that the jews have then the lord said remember because he had already given it to them as a statute and he was now telling giving them some new stuff and telling them to remember 
the Sabbath day because he had already given it to them when they came out from Egypt. Yes, amen. So that takes care of the remember part. Amen. It's not about um, Abraham, mm -hmm. Isaac, Adam, Eve. It is about the children of Israel. Now, Jesus Christ observed the tradition. The Bible said it was his custom. In Babylonian captivity, the synagogue was established because the synagogue was never a part of the Mosaic law. Synagogue was established from the, Mose the, 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 the captivity. And when the children of Israel returned to the land of Israel, there they, what they had established while they were in captivity, because they established a setting where they could gather and worship, remembering their homeland. And so they had priests there who would teach the generations to come the law when they went back to israel they continued the synagogue tradition because according to what we have read in exodus 16 the sabbath on the sabbath day they were to stay in their tents so, so the are there passages that address Elder Campbell, though, a congregational worship and, 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 and having the synagogues within a Sabbath day's journey and so on. When, when did all of that start to unfold? And where, where, in, where in Bible th does that come in? All of that unfold in, if you, if you go back to Nehemiah, Ezra, those books, you would see where Nehemiah, um, when the people came at the gate to sell, to sell their wares in the city, once they arrived at sundown, they would not be allowed inside. They would stay at the gate. Now, the Sabbath day's journey and all of that, that was established in a traditional sense. It was not a, um, what you would call, uh, well, 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 um, let, let's put it another way. Let's put it another way. In the, under the law of Moses, there would be a certain distance that you could not go further than, right? Um, if there was somebody in journey. That's right. Because the Sabbath day was actually a day when the people were to stay in oh. their tent. Just like how just like how we establish if you miss the Passover because you were, if you didn't get to take it because you were defiled, they made bylaws by the direction of the Lord that um, you could take the Passover in the second month on the 14th day. The same way they establish what you have called a Sabbath day's journey, which was um, less, it was about, um, I, 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 I could be wrong here, it was about um, a third of a mile or two thirds of a mile. There about um is that right, Pastor King? Uh, somewhere there it was not quite. Yes, about a, a third of a mile, not even a mile fully. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. It was not quite a mile, and this was established just in the event somebody was in a journey, and they had to stop. Mm -hmm. So it, so I, it I, was coming on to the Sabbath day, and they were in a journey. They ever um. They were caught wherever they reach. They were supposed to turn into that place and stay there until the Sabbath mm. was finished. So, so where where Amen. did it? Where was it introduced, Elder? I, I'm, I'm Pastor King. You can jump in here as well. Where was it introduced? Uh, where the gathering in the synagogue on the Sabbath started? Where where was that permitted? 
Yeah, so so as, so as um, Elder Campbell said, it, it, it started in the in the um, intertestamental period. Mm. So you know, there what are called the silent years um, from the last book um, Malachi to the, Matthew. The, the to Matthew. There are four hundred years where it was considered there were no inspired writings or prophets, um, and in that time. You had several things that developed. So we come in the New Testament, we start seeing some religious of sex, the sect, like um, the Pharisees and, and the Sadducees, etc. Um, we, we start to see the synagogue. So while they were in in um, in in captivity, they used to they started the practice of gathering and meat. It used to be by a river, etc. And um, where they were, they built the synagogues to meet, etc. And yes. the Jews, they were so particular. Uh, about the law and not wanting to to violate the law that they they had these 613 commandments but they produce other writings which are non-inspired um writings to interpret the law um so yes. you have things like the the mishnah and the, you know the talmud etc and they were yes. they want to interpret and they put things and they say okay this is where it came out where they asked jesus because there was a rage in the bit at that time when they asked jesus what is the greatest commandment because the the, 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 the the religious leaders, the scribes, then they thought that it is difficult to keep 613. So if you can't keep the main ones, and they ask, what is the greatest commandment of all the 613? And it's amazing, you know, not that the Sabbath was mentioned, but he said, you know, the fact that there is one God, and you must love him with all your heart. And I'm amazed that the proponents of Sabbath tend to believe in three gods, Trinity. <laughs> but the, because they say you must keep the commandments, but yes, the greatest commandment they neglect, you know. Um, but this is where these practices start. And so it's important to note that the Bible says the custom, as the custom was, it was not a, re a, 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 a religious not a law. of the law, but it was a custom, custom. that they developed in this time. So, and, so and in Acts what... chapter 15, 21, gentlemen, for Moses of all time, the very one we mentioned, Yes. As in every city, them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath yes. day. That wasn't yes. a congregational gathering? Yes. And, yes, and, and so, so this is what we're saying. The synagogue here refers to the synagogues came out by the custom and, and they used to read the law of Moses, right? Oh, and so, so this what is not saying, saying it happened here? in Moses' time. Uh, no. Not that it happened in Moses' time. Because he was clearly Moses... was going to stay inside your tent. Yes, that's what Moses told them. Understood. There was no Understood. congregational gathering. Um, All right. But what they were doing, they were reading the law of Moses, you know. Um, so when it says, so Moses has had throughout many generations, those who preach him in every city, being read in the synagogues on every Sabbath. So notice, the, if you look at the preceding, they were saying, we're going to write unto these Gentiles. We're going to write unto them to tell them to do so and so. You know, they would have this in writing, you know. You know, similarly for Moses, as in, in, in throughout every generation, people preach um reading the book of Moses um in the synagogues every Sabbath. No, the synagogues every Sabbath, we must recognize that the Gentiles would not be there in the synagogues every Sabbath. Mm. So uh yeah, it, so it was a gathering of Jews. The Jews gathered in the synagogues, the Gentiles were not really welcomed either, right? And that's why they had a problem when the Gentiles were excited and they came to the synagogue. You know, those Jews who accepted Paul, when they saw the Gentiles coming and accepting, they had a major issue. And a lot of them turned against him in, in that way. So yes. Even as a proselyte, you, you wouldn't have been allowed inside the temple? On, on if you're, so if you're a proselyte, if you're a convert to Judaism, you are, you are fine because you would have had to be circumcised and, and, yes. and, and you'd be keeping the law. And, and then you could, you could enter the, 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 the Sabbath. Yes. And, and there are certain nations but, that, who couldn't come into the, the, the synagogue up to the 10th generation, I think yeah. the scripture says, right? I think those were the Moabites. And, and women couldn't go in there either. Say that again? Women couldn't go in certain parts. Of, of the temple? Of the temple. Mm. Yeah. All right. Or even in the synagogue worship. Separated the men and the women. So the fact that the apostles and Jesus kept the Sabbath, we're saying... They were Jews and they were not going to be breaking the law. Yes? They yes. were Jews and they weren't going to be breaking the law. Yes. Uh, so, so that is the reason they kept the Sabbath. But there is yes. no explicit command in Scripture. And I want us to go there. And I'd love to get Pastor Clive on this. No explicit command to the church to keep 
the Sabbath. Why is that an important point? If it, if it is the case that the, the, the Lord wanted the church, and I think this is a weighty argument, that there is no explicit command, Pastor Clyde, for the church uh, to keep the Sabbath. Is that sufficient legs to stand on, uh, uh, Pastor Clyde, that the church wasn't asked to keep the Sabbath? It's not sufficient legs to do that. Um, it's, not a, it's not sufficient legs. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's not sufficient legs mm. for, 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 for us to keep the Sabbath. Um, it, I think it's mostly done out of because it's, it's in the scriptures and it's just easier for, a per, for, for, for it to point out and says, Hey, this is what then, but it's not supported by the, the new Testament, um, 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 scriptures. Right. Which is what, the, which is the, what, the, what the question is. So let me just restate it. Is there, is the fact that there is no command in the new Testament for the church to keep the Sabbath. Is that sufficient for us to say, yes, the church does not need to keep the Sabbath? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it, it's safe. To, it, not safe. It is, right? But if a person wants to keep the Sabbath, they have to keep the whole thing. If you, uh, and, and we're not telling not to keep it either. But if you want to keep it, you have to make sure that you, you, you are to keeping keep others. every one of them. <laughs> if it every is one. for salvation. If it is for salvation, right? And so, it can't live. <laughs> okay, let, let, let's let's so, let, hold let, on there, <laughs> That's an interesting point. If you if you decide that you're going to keep the Sabbath, you're saying you have to keep everyone. Six hundred and thirteen. Everyone. And, and I'll show you something. I'll show you something. Give I'll us some something. Bible support. Let me show you something. Um, Galatians I, three. Galatians chapter three. Say, say, let let's throw it in there. Mm -hmm. If you have yours already, as Pastor Clive finds his, his passage there, um, Ella Chambers, Galatians chapter 3. We're in Galatians 3. We're in Galatians 3. He said, um, Galatians 3, well, starting from verse 1, I mean, it's hard to really pick something out here. But in verse 10, mm -hmm. he says, for, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, curse is everyone that continue it not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Yes. Mm -hmm. All things. So you have to you have to do so Everyone. if you're doing one, you have to do all, all if, you, if if you if you go to America and you have to work on the Sabbath and, <laughs> uh, 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 and you leave your country, you go to America and what? it says, boy, you have to work tomorrow and you have to, you want your job. No matter what it is, break one, you break all. Some serious revelation being doing break out here all. and the apostles. So, so, so what I'm saying is that you can, you, if listen, if, if you can keep it, God bless you. <laughs> yes, that's all I can say. If you can keep it, the Lord bless you. But Jesus make a better way. That's right. Jesus that's make right. impossible become possible for us. There's a scripture that I'm really looking for, but mm. I'll tap in when I find it. Yes. So, 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 so the the the, the Bible then, uh, uh, elders, we're saying, and I and I listened to Doug Batchelor. He never pointed to any specific passage in the New Testament, um, Ella Campbell, because I know you have to run, uh, leave us soon. So I want to to pull as much as we can from you uh, before you have to run. Nothing pointed out in in the in the in the New Testament to say. The, no explicit command, and and I find that to be, I find that to be particularly instructive. And if we could go back for a moment on the argument, because you know, one of the shows this week, I think it was, we were talking about tithing, and the the issue of Abraham tithing came up. And of course, you know, we're going to revisit some of these issues very soon uh, to to really dive deeper into them. And we're saying the the fact that. The Mosaic law was done away with does not affect the command to tithe because tithing predated the law. But that argument, no, I was thinking that argument um, might can hold water, but I'm realizing now that maybe that argument is under duress. Why am I realizing this? Because circumcision was given to Moses prior to, not Moses, to Abraham prior to the law. And if you go in the book of 
of Genesis. Yes, if you go to Genesis 17 and read from about 9 to 14, that is where circumcision was introduced to, 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 to Abraham. And, and, and the Bible is clear in Acts chapter 15 that you need not be circumcised and keep the law of Moses. So it's not just Moses getting knocked by, by grace, you know, and keeping the law. All Abraham and the circumcision too. So that argument, I think, is under the rest now as well. Um, that, that, that it predated the law because circumcision pre, past the king, pre, circumcision predated the law. Yeah, I mean, we're not here to talk about tithing, but I, what I, what my belief personally, and what I, I, this is how I teach it, and you know, I think the scripture is clear, because there's no explicit command for tithing in the New Testament either. However, um, you know, we see the principle of giving that has been established, and I think that the there is the liberty within the church to establish any system of giving if you're if you're left to the goodwill of men then you know the church will be very very thin and so you know we can implement a system of tithing there but there has to be a system of 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 of, of, of giving and an obligatory system i think that's what the scripture teaches but i don't hmm. want to get into that right. no, so the argument is, is, yeah. the argument the, is the, things predating yeah so tithing predating the law doesn't doesn't um is not an argument for it to be enforced i am in total agreement in, mm, yes yeah. yes mm. I, I think the scripture that pastor Clive might be looking for is um james 2 verse 10 for whosoever shall keep the whole law yes. and yet that's offend in one point yes he is guilty of all that's it so you have to keep the entire if you keep the whole law but offend in one point, you're, you're guilty of all. But, but even in that passage where we were at, though, Ella Campbell, it suggests that even if you keep it, you're still um, in a little difficulty. You're still in a bind because Galatians 3... In a lot of difficulty. Um, <laughs> but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. By the it law. For the live by faith. So even if you're keeping them faithfully, you still might run into some problems. Isn't that we're going to run into problems? Amen. Amen. And I mean, the pro there's a and, problem. And, rest, this you know. and this is dangerous. And this is very dangerous. You know, <clears throat> if we look at Numbers, Numbers 15, hmm. 32, and while the children of uh, the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks. 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 Man hungry now. If we look at what James was just telling us, if we break one, eh? he said, gathering sticks up on the Sabbath day, and they that found him gathering sticks brought him unto Moses and Aaron and unto all the congregation. And they put him in in what they they they, they wanted to they, they catch somebody in, a, mm. in a, the act of getting sticks on the Sabbath, which, on was, the Sabbath which day. was a breaking of the Sabbath. It's a breaking of the Sabbath. It's almost impossible for you not to feel hungry or something. Your child is 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 sick, is, is, is sick mm. and you need to right. But the point I'm making is. What did they do to this man? They bring the man before the congregation mm -hmm. and find out what to do with him. And in a long story short, this Moses at the time didn't know what to do with him. Mm. Moses said, let's put him somewhere until we can figure it out. And then Moses figured it out and said, well, this man needs to die. Now, Jesus died for you and I. And that's if we're going to keep it and break it. That's the punishment of breaking the law, right there. The Sabbath. Yeah. The Sabbath. You know, you I, I think the issue it. comes. Okay, go ahead, Elder Campbell. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Elder I was just saying that you cannot separate the punishment for breaking the law from the keeping of the law itself. That's because right. somebody will argue, well, since Jesus died for us, if we break it. We can simply we can ask for forgiveness, but there was no argument here about forgiveness. The, the, the argument here is that you break it, 
you're punished. Yeah. Mm. You understand? Because the reality is that, um, and, and, and even in Acts 15, the apostles concluded, why should we put a burden on the Gentiles which our fathers could not bear? Mm. Mm. Interesting. And that's why they, 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 they spoke the, the four things they spoke. Because they said, our fathers couldn't bear the burden that they were under. Why should we put it on the Gentiles? And, and, and so, um, you, you understand, you offend, you're punished. Interesting points being raised here. Can, can you we, look also we're, at... at, at we're, we're going to the break. Well, you want us to take it before we go to the break? Let's, let's take Matthew, it. Look, yes. look at Matthew. Find Matthew chapter 12, verses 1. Matthew chapter 12, verse 1. We're there. Jesus is going to the cane field. Mm. Oh, that was in my spirit. And the ma <laughs> no, 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 because he says he says that Jesus kept the Sabbath, but Jesus was going to a cane field on the Sabbath day. You're, you're, near an offering. you're near an offering. Go ahead, Red. He said that Jesus and the disciples and the apostles they kept the Sabbath, but the Bible says that at that time Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the um, through the corn, and the his corn. disciple were hungry. <laughs> they ran out good. Huh? Yes. So they they hungry while they were passed through the cane field, the, the corn field, so and you, began to pluck the, ears. the ears of corn and eat. Number one, plugging plucking is work. Mm. Reaping is work. This is Jesus doing this now. And his disciples. And his disciples. But when the Pharisees saw him, they said unto him. Well, it seemed to be saying it was his disciples who were plucking the ears of corn. But who they, who they were with? They were with him and they were plucking the ears so of corn. So why didn't he yes. stop them? Very good question. And this still doesn't take away from the point. But it's a very good point. I was wondering. <laughs> Well, I was just reading the first verse and it said that. But so so he did not stop them, but the Pharisees had an issue, Rev. What did the Pharisees say? They, they, they had an issue because they they they, they 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 let's let's look at it. The Pharisees, they said unto him, Behold, that disciple did that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath. To do upon the Sabbath day. Mm. But he said unto them. He said unto them. Uh, have you not read? Have you not read what David, what David did? Mm. Oh Lord Jesus, when David went through, when David was hungry, and they that were with him, how he entered into the house of God and and did eat and break bread, show bread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, neither with him for them, but only for the priests. That's it. Mm. So I want to know how is it that he kept the law and he's reminding the Pharisees and the Sadducees of an incident that happened under the time of David. And I have a different perspective of David. And David lived under law, but he lived in the time of law, but lived in grace. <laughs> yep. He closes by saying, which is, I think this is critical. He closes by saying, for the son of man, past the king. His Lord. Yeah. His that Lord. is the key part. The Sabbath day. That, that is the key part. The it's author the of the Sabbath. Yes. The Lord Jesus Christ. And I think, you know, the, the, Jesus kept the Sabbath. He kept all the law. He was not, he was not, um, he didn't break any point in the law because he, he, he fulfilled the law. He was the perfect man. Which is but why he was establishing the there that he was the here. Lord of the Sabbath. He's the and, Lord. Um, yeah. And, and, and as the Lord of the Sabbath, you know, and, and, and the truth is that the, the, as the Lord of the Sabbath, he was able to, to, um, to better interpret and to do with whatever he wanted um, with that, that law. And as the Lord of the Sabbath, he did not give his disciples any mandate based on what we have seen. If you, if you notice all the things that I've preached and have been reiterated mm. in the New Testament, the one thing that seems to have been left out consistently is for us to keep the Sabbath. I so Jesus kept it. Me. He was still under that covenant. But I when the new covenant me. came into force, he became the Sabbath rest. A powerful point there. He says he's Lord of the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And 
I, 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 we're going to go to the break after this, but he says he's Lord of the Sabbath. But he never gave an instruction for the church to keep the Sabbath. That's a powerful argument, Pastor King. We're discussing the Sabbath issue on the Apostles' Doctrine. We're trying our best before sundown to see if we can put the Sabbath issue to rest. Yeah? More on the other side of the break. Get this fire. Ah, ah, ah. The Holy Ghost in my house. It burns like liquid fire. The Holy Ghost in my house. Are you ready to amplify your message and reach hearts with purpose? Introducing HGG Advertising, your partner in spreading the gospel and connecting with the Christian community. Churches, Christian-based businesses, listen up. With HGG Advertising, you can reach your audience through powerful radio campaigns. Engage hearts inspire minds and grow your community with HGG Radio which is already reaching 136 countries worldwide. We specialize in promoting Christian values and helping businesses aligned with faith-based principles. Whether it's a church event or your business rooted in Christian values, HGG Advertising is here for you. Connect with us and let's share your message with purpose. HGG Advertising, spreading the gospel, connecting communities Email us today at ads at hggradio.ca. That's ads at hggradio.ca. Or call us today at 825-343-4486. HGG Radio. Saffron Caribbean Delight, your one-stop Caribbean cuisine restaurant with their tasty oxtail, curry chicken, jerk chicken, and stew beef. Not to mention their weekend specials, fried fish and soup. Come out and get a taste of the Caribbean. Located at 8155-112 Avenue or call to order at 780-474-9005. Opening hours from Tuesdays to Thursday from 1 to 7 p.m. And Friday and Saturday, 1 to 8 p.m. Saffron Caribbean Delight. Light. It's not about the quantity, but the quality. All in one dollar store. All in one. Get your groceries, over-the-counter drugs, home decor, bathroom, laundry, and kitchen accessories, comforters, blankets, beauty, stationery, events, and birthday supplies, children toys, kids clothes, sneakers, sandals, hats, track suits, winter spring jackets, and so much more. Visit them today. 8904th Street, 118 Avenue, Edmonton, Alberta. Open every day. Call 587-977 2343 email waka1041 at gmail.com all in one dollar store hgg radio calling all believers are you continuing steadfastly in the apostles doctrine join us right here on hgg radio mondays to fridays from 2 p.m to 4 p.m mst and 4 p.m to 6 p.m est for a new and exciting bible discussion program the apostles doctrine come and hear the word being right divided by dynamic preachers and teachers. It's the Apostles' Doctrine, hosted by Minister Tyrone Reed, weekdays from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. MSD. Come to the fellowship, stay for cerebral conversations and all things scriptural. Welcome back, welcome back. Thank you so much for staying with us on this TGI edition of the Apostles' Doctrine. We're trying to put this Sabbath issue to rest as one author uh, it, it tagged his um, book. He, he entitled his book. I think is 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 a is a pastor with the United Pentecostal Church of Jamaica. I think uh, Reverend Ellis. I think is his name. Let's put the Sabbath issue to rest. Yeah. Is a book he 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 um uh, he he authored. And and perhaps w when we revisit the Sabbath, we should try to get uh, Reverend Ellis on yeah to talk uh, about the contents of that book. But. But interesting passage there raised by, by Reverend Clive before we went to the break. For the Son of Man is, is, is Lord even of the Sabbath. And that's what he told the Pharisees when they were complaining that his disciples broke the Sabbath. And in another place, uh, you'll see as uh, uh, Reverend Clive has another passage lined up where he told them another thing concerning the Sabbath. Not just that Mark. the Son of Man is the, is the Lord of the Sabbath. Mark. He also said what, Reverend? Mark, Mark, Mark chapter uh, 2, verses 27 and 28. Mark 2, 27 28. Hmm. 
Mark, give it to me again. Let me read it for the Mark Mark chapter two yes. verses twenty seven. 27 to 28. All right, let's read it for the for the listeners and the viewers. And he said unto them, and this he is Jesus, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. And he again repeats the, 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 that statement, Pastor K. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. And this is a retelling of the, the plucking of the, the ears. And it came to pass, let me just give the context, that he went through the cornfields on the Sabbath day. And his disciples began as they went to pluck the ears of the corn. And, and, and again, Pastor King, important that we noted that it wasn't Jesus who was plucking the, the ears of the corn because he observed all of the law, right? But, but it is his disciples were. And the Pharisees said unto him, Behold, why do they on the Sabbath day that which is not lawful? And he said unto them, Have ye never read? And he told them about David or how in the house of God in the days of Abiathar the priest, the high priest. And did eat the shoe bread, which is not lawful to eat, but for the priests, and gave also to them which were, were with him. But there's a passage I want to throw into the mix here, and I want to get you guys on it. I think you, you gentlemen, on because I hear, I think you touched on it, Pastor King. Romans chapter 14. Yeah. And Romans chapter 14, uh, Pastor Clive says, Let him, let not him that eateth despise him that eateth. Let him, let, let not him that eateth rather, despise him that eateth not. Romans. And let not, Romans chapter 14, we're at verse 3, chapter 14, beginning at verse 3. Okay. Let not him that eateth, despise him that eateth not. So if you're eating your pork, then for example, since that's a controversial one, right? The Bible is saying, if you eat, let him that don't eat pork then, despise him that don't eat it. And let not him which eateth careful, not, it touch, careful, it touch pork, no? judge him, <laughs> judge him that eateth, for God hath received him. What the, thou that judgest another man's servant, to his own master he standeth or falleth? Yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. One man esteemeth one day above another, which is where I wanted to go. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regarded the day regarded it unto the Lord, and he that regarded not the day to the Lord he doth not regard it. He that eateth not eateth uh, to the he that eateth eateth to the Lord, for he giveth thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord he eateth not and giveth thanks. Uh, Pastor King, what is Paul uh, 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 saying to us here in, in the book of Romans? If one man esteem one day above another, he does it unto the... the, the to, it, it, some people call it Christian liberty. Yeah. It, it's not what Paul is talking about. Yeah, so as, as I said, my introduction, that's what the, the, the whole thing of the Sabbath day, keeping the Sabbath day is relegated to in the New Testament, a matter of Christian liberty. And so, I mean, the truth is you can decide to worship on the Sabbath day um, you can decide to worship on the Sunday, the first eight day, whatever you call it. You can decide to worship every day, which we should, you know. But the 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 thing is that um, we have liberty on this matter. It's not a salvation issue. And so the problem comes when you want to transpose the law and things from the law, you know, into the New Testament covenant, you know, and and make it a salvation matter. We're running to issues. And so anybody who wants to keep the Sabbath. Um, it doesn't save them, but anything you do unto the Lord, you know, that, that is good and acceptable based on your motive. But you should not put that on others and make it a requirement, amen, for the church today. So it was simply saying it's a matter of Christian liberty. A matter of Christian liberty. The Christians have liberty that they can exercise, Pastor Clive. I'd love you to come in on that. It's not salvific because uh, yes. there is no command uh, to the church to, to keep the Sabbath. Yes, Jesus and his, his disciples kept the Sabbath, but 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 in the church, we know that was the law and they were supposed to keep the law as reasonable and good men because they were under the law. But when the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ ushered in the church, uh, the, uh, grace, ushered in the era of grace, now saved by grace through faith. Where is that command uh, to, to, to keep the Sabbath, Pastor Clive? It, it, Paul is saying here, you have Christian liberty. If you want to esteem every day alike. And I think this is a very poignant scripture. And, and, and to suggest there is no command to keep it. And there is a command to the church that if you esteem one day above another, you do it unto the Lord. 
And if you esteem all they like, you do it under the... So the matter is actually addressed in the New Testament, Pastor King and Pastor Clyde. The matter is actually addressed in the New Testament. It's not that it's not addressed. There is no command to keep the Sabbath, but the New Testament command um, addresses the Sabbath. And it's saying here, if you esteem one day above another, you do it unto the Lord. Pastor Klein, talk to us about that. Yes, 100%. Uh, let's, uh, I know that we don't have a lot of time, but um, within the time we have left, the Bible says in Colossians chapter 2, verses 16, says, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day. Mm, that is a holy that day. That is Colossians. Colossians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. Mm -hmm. or, of, uh, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath. Days. And, Days. and you never stop there. What 17 says? Which are a shadow of the th uh, sh uh, shadow of things to come. And we talk about the shadow of the building, uh, of, of the building earlier. Uh, um, but the body of Christ is of Christ. Powerful right? scripture there. So it, it's we should not use it as a judgmental thing. And as I said earlier, we should use this opportunity to be able to point out scriptures because a lot of persons, you know, we grew up into our um um our our tradition, and when we grow in tradition, we hold on to tradition, but we're not we we, we let's 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 Put aside the tradition and look and see what the Bible says. Mm. Not mommy religion now and daddy religion and that's what. And this is not what this program is about. This program is about to give information to see it from our from the perspective of what the Bible says. And if persons, if you're out there and you 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 you, you want to you know point out that hey you know what about the scripture? What the scripture says? Welcome to that. Let's look at it and, and let's and, start and, Bible. And, and, Come, let us reason. Then let's start Bible. But Colossians two, read it. Let's read it again, Rev Man. That one is a powerful passage. You know? it, it is, and Galatians oh. chapter four as mm. well. Galatians, well. <clears throat> Galatians chapter four as well. But now, after that, he have known God, or or rather, are known of God. Mm. How turn he again? He again to the weak and belly, beg, beg, beggarly element. In other words, once you get to know the rest Can I return? that we are in, oh, we're going to turn or return to the, to the weak. And there's a passage that talks about that the, the law was weak. And this is saying that. The the, the, the the element, the the, 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 the weak and beggarly element. Uh huh. Where unto he this destroy again to be in bondage. Mm. So the law was a schoolmaster, if we go further down, it it was a bondage. Mm. Versus yes, Nelson. and I think it's it's interesting. It's imp it's I think it's important, Rev. If you complete the reading there, because I think you have four to eleven, nine to eleven, right? I just lost it. Uh, nine to eleven. I, I I found it right here. But now, after that, you have known God, or rather, are known of God. How turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? You observe days and months and times and years. I'm afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am, for I am as ye are. Ye have not injured me at all. He knew, you, and then he goes on to, to, to give them, a, 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 you know, that how he's been with them. But what Paul is saying, this observing of, of months and times and years undoes the entire labor that he labored with them because... You're no longer under the law. Isn't that what Paul is saying, Pastor King? Amen, most definitely. So if you need to keep the Sabbath for salvation, what was the purpose of the blood of Jesus Christ? <laughs> sure. um, you know, th th there, is, there is something I, I, I need to mention. Um, because uh, the, Sabbath, the Sabbath, the Bible says, was made for man. You know, and, and um, Jesus said, you know, when God instituted 
It was made for man, for man to get the rest. And when the scripture says that Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath, the biblical usage, the, 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 um, the Greek word, it means that word Lord, when he says Lord of the Sabbath, it means the person to whom the thing belongs. You know, the person which has power of deciding. And, um, you know, so the possessor of it. And so the thing is that, that, that Jesus Christ was the was really the owner of the Sabbath. And um, he was saying, he has the, the power to decide. So, you know, no, leave them alone. They're not breaking it. But the, 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 the important thing that the Sabbath led to, and, you know, so the rest that, that God established, this is the important thing. This is where we get the rest now. I want to read Isaiah 28, 10 to 12. It says, for precept must be upon precept, line upon line. You know, here a little, there a little. In verse 11, it says, For with stammering lips and another tongue, he would speak to his people. And then here, verse 12, To whom he said, This is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. So the, the essence is that this is, this is a prophecy speaking of the Holy Ghost, which was to come. And the point that, that, that those who, you know, proponents of keeping the Sabbath day need to recognize is that, you know, the, 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 the Sabbath was, uh, it, it, it was, it typified the rest that we would get in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost fulfilled the Sabbath. The Holy Ghost is the building. That's and right. so therefore, once we have the rest in the Holy Ghost, we really don't need the Sabbath day. And, and you know, if, if we go to, um, you know, I know in Hebrews, Chapter 4, it speaks of, you know, the rest that the people of God, the rest that the people of God get. And so the essence is that rest is in the Holy Ghost. Amen. That is why the Sabbath day commandment, the fourth commandment has been fulfilled. And because there is no greater thing, a greater rest that we get in Jesus Christ, in being filled with the power of the Holy Ghost, there is no need to keep a fourth commandment. Amen. Because this was a shadow. It was typifying, it prefigured what God really wanted, you know, the, 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 the ultimate that he wanted to get at, that rest that we get in Jesus Christ. Mm. Mm. And, and he went on to, to, to say in Matthew 12, 12, how much, uh, but let me read from verse 11. And he said unto them, what man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep? And if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? Because the Lord Jesus was tinkering with their theology here, you know, their interpretation yeah. of the Sabbath, right? Uh, he was really messing with their theology. So he says to them, how much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore, it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. He, he made it clear to them it is lawful to do well uh, on the Sabbath days. And, uh, uh, Sabbath day. and then he went and, and healed the man. And of course, they were all oh. upset with him uh, as a result of that. But 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 we're seeing here, and I and I gather, Pastor Clive, I'd love you to to offer a, a word on this. Uh, the the this there's no New Testament command to the church to keep the Sabbath. I think that is settled. We've put that matter to rest. No New Testament command. That's right. No explicit command in New Testament to the church to keep the Sabbath. But the New Testament addresses the Sabbath. That's right. And it says, basically, if you esteem one day above another, you do it unto the Lord. As a matter of fact, Paul says, if you go back to observing the Sabbath, it, it's as if I've given you labor in vain. Pastor yes, Clive. Because you have now gone back to the weak and beggarly elements. You've gone back to uh, types and shadow. Uh, when you have the real thing. The real thing. Listen to what Hebrews chapter 4 says. Let us therefore, Hebrews 4, 1, 2, to, to six, but I'm not going to read all of it. It says, let us therefore fear, lest a promise be left us. This promise of the Holy Ghost, this rest, um, Paul is telling the, the Jew, and he's saying, let us therefore fear, lest a promise be left us, left us of enter into his rest. And that his rest, there meaning the rest in the Holy Ghost. Um, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not mix, that being mixed with faith mm. in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest. If you believe the gospel, 
you enter into rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they uh, shall enter into my rest, and the rest is, right? Mm. So <clears throat> Paul is making it clear that the rest is here. The building. The building is here. So, so I, I, and it's a point that Pastor King made, and it's such a, it's such a poignant uh, point. The if if you if you're out in the sun and you you're being battered by the the rays from the sun, and you're standing in the shade of the building, yeah, because the the a, 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 a shadow sorry is cast by the building. Once you're inside the building, you have no need of the shadow. Of yeah? the building. Once you're inside the building. Because so the building it. is what casts a shadow in the first place. Uh, this is really what was intended, and not and not the the types and the shadows. Uh, the, the, the 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 anti-type was what was really intended. Um, you know, if I can pull back from from some of the things I learned in 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 older years, yes. But 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 interesting conversation. Uh, I think we've. We've been able to drill down into some things concerning the Sabbath. We're almost out of time. Uh, we we want to we wanna wrap up here. Uh, but but we've, we've, we've learned today that, that there is no explicit command in the, in the New Testament for the church to keep the Sabbath. Uh, and we also learned today that it, it, let no man judge you according to Colossians 2.16. In meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are, are, are a shadow of things to come. But the body, the building, is of Christ. Huh? Interesting, interesting conversation here uh, on the Sabbath. I want to I wanna thank Pastor King. I don't know if you have any closing remarks you want to give us, Pastor King. Amen. Bless God. So, you know, I just want to leave it. Um... You have said it, but in my 30 seconds, they, you know, it, it's a matter of Christian liberty. You know, the, 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 the Sabbath doesn't impact salvation. Christ has fulfilled it. It was the shadow to point to him. And, um, you know, the, 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 nothing is wrong. We don't keep a Sabbath now. We have the Holy Ghost, but nothing is wrong if you meet on a Sunday. Um, you know, the Bible says in Acts 20, it says on the first day of the week, the disciples came together. You know, the break bread speaks that you know, could speak of communion, etc. In 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 First Corinthians sixteen two, it says on the first day of the week, you know, you said you should come together and, and bring that offering, the collections. You know, in Revelation one ten, it says John was in the spirit of the Lord's day, and that's what they refer to it. This is the resurrection day and Sunday as the Lord's day. So, um, I, I I think enough has been said and done to lay to rest, and no one needs to feel condemned. Serve Jesus Christ, and if you want rest. You get that rest in the Holy Ghost. God bless. Pastor, Pastor um, Klein, your closing remarks. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28, he says, Come unto me, all ye that are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Mm. So your rest is in Jesus. Touche, touche. What a scripture to close that. Amen. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, come unto me. And I will give you rest. You know, the Lord Jesus is interested in a relationship with you. you know? He's the only one who invites you to a relationship and says, come with your baggage. You know? Everybody else says, check your baggage on. You know? <laughs> no, no, carry on. Check it. Never be a feet. Yeah, <laughs> check it. You can't carry it on. But he says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. A, a great point on which to end uh, today's episode of the Apostles' Doctrine. Uh, next week, God willing, we'll have another uh, week of interesting topics lined up for you. I want to thank Pastor Clive Atkinson from the Higher Ground Tabernacle right here in Edmonton, Canada. And of course, Pastor Garfield King, who is coming to us uh, via video link from uh, New York. Pastor King, thank you so very much. Uh, for joining us. Thank you. And also to Elder uh, out in Jamaica who joined us uh, as well. Elder Richard Campbell, God bless you. Uh, thank you for the time and the thoughts as well. This has been the Apostles Doctrine. God willing, we'll see you again next week, 2 p.m. MST, 3 p.m. if you're in Jamaica. All the best. And all things scriptural. Oh.